Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Polish Show. It's part two of my conversation with Dr. Colin Green. He's the principal of the Princess Margaret Secondary School. If you joined us last week, you would have received a wealth of information about discipline and about how our children can succeed if they're willing to do the work, to be diligent, and to understand that we adults and teachers, we want the best for them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to present this program to you tonight, and we know that it will be helpful to you and to your circle of friends and family. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us on The Polish Show. Remember to watch The Polish Show via CTV Channel 2 on Tuesday nights at 9 and Sundays at 1 in the afternoon. The Polish Show inspires, entertains, and transforms behavior. Like me on Facebook, The Polish Show. And please watch The Polish Show programs via YouTube at The Polish Show TV. Dr. Colin Green has returned for part two. And we are so happy to have you at The Polish Show. We know that you could be elsewhere, but you've chosen to be here, and we are so delighted. We spoke about discipline. We spoke about so many other factors in our first part of our conversation. I want to jump right into entrepreneurship. I was listening to BBC, and there, there was a program being aired, and it spoke about junior achievement, which started over a hundred years ago and the junior achievement program it invited thousands of executives to speak with young people there were 280 programs 4 million young people in more than 40 European countries and I listened as they spoke about generation E it's a generation of entrepreneurs, generation of Europeans. And what I recognize from that program, entrepreneurship, starts in our homes and in our schools. Junior Achievement, that was yeah. a program that was in our system years ago. Oh, yeah. it's not anymore? I'm not too sure if it still exists, but they were, that was a program that was mm -hmm. vivid in our education system. So a lot of well, things that, well people, that people think to forget, they were here. Mm -hmm. The, the point is that, though, um, I think we have come to a, 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 a more conscious element in our teaching and our school structures that entrepreneurship is an element that we have to focus mm -hmm. on. My wife did a, a study on that, a whole thesis on entrepreneurship. I think her, her bachelor's degree was, was based on entrepreneurship mm -hmm. in our school, teaching entrepreneurship, encouraging it. Mm -hmm. So something I'm familiar with. And... Um, it's an essential item because there's oh, an yes. element that we now talk about um, that we have to teach our children that they don't necessarily always have to be employees. They too they can, can become employers, employers and mm -hmm. they, can, they can generate income. Yes. And you are seeing that growing spirit among young people in mm -hmm. this country. So even if they do work for somebody, everybody has a side hustle. Yes. Everybody <laughs> has true. a side business. Everybody has a hustle. Whether it's his nails, yes. whether it's yes. his hair, yes. whether it is cakes, whether it's... Mm. Everybody is doing something. Making masks. Making masks. Mm -hmm. they, 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 that spirit exists. Making sanitizers. Ties, they're doing all I kinds mean, of things. Yes. Yeah. And so... It is that generation that is mm -hmm. understanding that, yeah, that skills are to be paid for. Mm -hmm. And they, they can get along. And they also realize that no one job is for life. That's true. Yeah. So therefore, you have to be versatile. Mm -hmm. And just like we are living in a pandemic, mm -hmm. many people have lost their jobs. So what are you going to do? Sit down you and wait. You go to a skill set. You go to a skill set. Mm -hmm. And out of that, I see people making butter. 
I see people doing all kinds of body, body all kinds of things. I mean, and people are even exporting because I've been listening to the radio mm -hmm. and I hear of somebody making fried dumplings and stuffed, chips. Stuffed fried dumplings. Stuffed fried dumplings yes. and, 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 and potato ch chips and our planting chips. And are better equipped mm -hmm. to teach that element now. And even at the advanced level study, I think entrepreneurship is a field of study mm -hmm. as well. So it, it's a growing realization that um, it is something that we have to embark on. Uh, many of our parents were like that. We sold all kinds of things. We did all kinds of things. Cool. But there, another thing that is being spoken about now is generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're assuming that some of us have money. But <laughs> <laughs> but Indeed. But you can't tell them that we're yes. struggling just but like them because but we, there don't are look, some good we don't look so, of, right? of families working together. Yes. in partnership and people are understanding that partnership is something that mm -hmm. we need to engage in even Isabel, some young yes. people they're combining their individual but they, they're skills. the ones that i'm yes. talking about i'm not talking about old people i'm talking <laughs> about young people <laughs> i'm talking about the young people who, who can teach us a lesson a lesson in in those areas but while we have some who are passionate about work and entrepreneurship are you convinced that there are some young people who've decided, I'm not going to work for anyone, I'm not going to start a business, being unemployed is just fine? Yeah, but they're not unemployed. People like that probably employed in something that is illegitimate. Mm. Because, um, and that's the area mm -hmm. that we have to tackle. Mm -hmm. Because there's still vice in our society. Yes. There's still dysfunctional behavior mm -hmm. in our society. And so we need to tackle that. And mm -hmm. honest day's work is what we want to establish. You know, no society is perfect, really. Mm -hmm. But you have people making excuses for people. Oh, they can't find work. And the, the, the reason You're not why convinced? The reason why they are doing this mm -hmm. is because they can't find work. I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> I mean, you, work mm -hmm. and hours be found. You can't find the work that you want. you want. And someone who is reasoning like that is not seeking any work at all. Mm. If you understand what I'm saying. They're waiting for you to drop into their lap. Drop into their lap. There are mm. lots of kind of work out there to do. This question of which ones you want to do yes. and which one you want to find. So if you do kind of work that they're talking about, they're waiting for somebody to give them a job. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're saying that entrepreneurship is an essential element that if you can't find what you want, create you create one. that environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. You go around this country, there are lots of grills. I show if we leave this program, there are lots of barbecues going on. That's barbecues true. use what? Coal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, hear what? When I was growing up, I burned coal kill with my father and my mom yeah, because it, was in, it was in the central mm -hmm. part of the lull when mm -hmm. in an economic downturn, the, yeah. you got to do what you had to do. But they'll complain the sun is too hot, well, chopping wood. But I see a lot of young people who are getting into agriculture and mm -hmm. so on too as I feel. They're going to different things. So what I'm saying, mm -hmm. it's not a perfect world, but not finding work is not an excuse for you to, to do illegal stuff. Mm -hmm. No. And that is what we have to teach them. But entrepreneurship generally is, is, is a concept that is on the rise, that our people mm -hmm. are starting business and how they handle those business. I went to a tire man <laughs> to change the tire. And the service that I received when I went to go, to go to fix the tire, I knew I would be going back. <laughs> what and happened? It was just excellent service. Yes. Even from the setup of the tire place, it's it, it, a nice little place for you to sit and the way all this. Yes. Oh, well, this and that nice. I was about to say, though, that yes, we can have entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Don't have a problem with that. But even the same barbecue grill that you mentioned as an example, there's so many people offering chicken mm -hmm. and pigtails and whatever else. But co the customer service can be, be the competitive and, advantage and the, competitive ma and the marketing edge. yes and the marketing because i can sell barbecue chicken you can sell barbecue chicken but do you at least have a chair a table where i can be seated mm. do you have sanitizers do you have this do you have that that can make a difference to this one over here who's just you know about giving and me the everything chicken is and in it from the marketing yeah. to the packaging so it might yes. be selling burgers you give the burger a name Yes. A friend of mine was telling me she had some burgers and some they had some bizarre names and she was telling <laughs> the bazaar the bizarre ones were were, were selling. <laughs> yes. 
So it's all in the name. Yes, I was asked. She said she had, she had a knuckle burger. I said, what's that knuckle, knuckle burger? Knuckle burger. She said the burger had in, it had jalapeno peppers and so on because it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, that makes sense. And Knuckles she, are usually yeah. hot. <laughs> <laughs> so she was giving me, she was giving me all those. Well, you don't need any knuckle burger. I haven't experienced it either. <laughs> but the point is, but, but she was marking it in a way. I know. And. And people, it's relevant. Relevant to the it's conversation. It's relevant to the conversation. Have. So whether they yeah. have knuckle or not, they, <laughs> she was just the people were buying yeah. it. They all get a big burger, a little pineapple, and yeah. the same burger, all you've done is put a little pineapple yes, on that, yeah. and that becomes a bestseller. Should we be concerned about automation? Um, I don't know. No? I don't know. But there's a human element that we, we still yeah. cannot ever get. Can I ever get rid of? Because you know that in some sectors, you call a number, and instead of that number being answered by someone in your geography, you're speaking with someone maybe in Asia. Well, these days, if you call the banks, you bet your life that is either Trinidadian or Jamaican <laughs> answering you. Beyond that, too, you know. Yeah. It's not just some places, it's not nobody answering you, it's a machine. Mm -hmm. And you go to a particular direction. And it gives you the instructions. And I the hate yeah. that. You can be on the phone for. But it's becoming more and more like 20 that. Twenty minutes, an hour, hour and a half. I believe just now. And there's still no solution. When you travel, nobody's gonna check you, and nobody's gonna time with Yeah, that. we're doing the kiosk now. Uh, but the strangest thing is, right? Businesses are all business leaders are always searching for a competitive advantage. Everybody thought of automation as a solution. Then the other day, I heard a business being advertised via American TV. And they were saying, everybody's automated. We have the personal touch. Our operators answer you. And so yeah. they, they, they have now reversed the process and have returned mm -hmm. to the human and, and, element. And, and, and because they know that it works. Businesses now want to make you feel important that mm -hmm. they remembered you. Yes. So I remember I went to buy something the last time my anniversary came up for my wife. Mm -hmm. And the, the way I went, mm -hmm. the, I filled out a form, I had a date of birth. I thought it was just a part of the, the transaction. Mm -hmm. Only to find that um, when my birthday, I got a call from the guy, hello, we just want to wish you all the best. Yes. And whatever. I said, you just want to wish me all the best. <laughs> and if you need anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the data, the data is important. Thank you for staying with us on the Paula Show. Is automation a good thing or is it a bad thing? Listen, the world is evolving and we have to go with the changes or we'll be stuck in the past. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Stay with us, please. What does it take to be an effective teacher? Oh, well, um... There's, there's several qualities mm -hmm. that you want to look at to be an effective teacher. And first of all, you have to be knowledgeable mm. about the, the area in which you're going to teach. So you ought to know it better than the people who you're teaching. I would be an place. excellent geography teacher. You probably would be. And so then you have the skill sets to be able to impart knowledge, the ability to plan, to execute lessons and so on. Those are the, 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 the basic skill set. But there's another aspect of being, of being of good qualities of a teacher that I like to talk about a lot. And that has to do with the human dimensions of teaching. Oh, okay. And that dimension to be a good teacher, you have to do certain things. For instance, a good teacher has to have some element of charisma, meaning you have to be able to convince people that they should trust and listen to what you're saying. Okay. And you bring something to the party. Tick so number one. Uh, yes. I'm good with yeah, that. The charisma. You, you yes. do well with the charisma. I'm, I'm doing well with the charisma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well. But there, there are different types of charisma. So yes. there are people who, who are, you and I are like that, extroverted. Yes. Oh, and I, yes. come at, I come to life in a classroom. Yes. I use a, kids like that. Mm -hmm. but that's one element. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to be a part of the human, you have to be humorous. You have to have a sense of humor. I'm, I'm, I'm two, take, number two, I'm good. You don't want to take things too seriously yes. because in the class, Mm -hmm. Children learn when they're having fun. Yes. And they, they don't even know that they're learning. So in their dynamic And I'm good with spaces, storytelling too. Well, all of that. And then, mm -hmm. but there are different skill sets. You have to be creative in that dynamic. Yes. You have to be mm -hmm. fair mm -hmm. in your discipline structures that you're offering to them. So they don't mind discipline, but yeah. you have to be fair. You have to be consistent. I could be that, yeah. And you have to be consistent. Consistently yes, fair. Yes, you also have to mm -hmm. be compassionate. I'm 
Go as a, that. As a, as a yes. teacher, that human element, you put yourself, you empathy is a part of your mm -hmm. way of being, you put yourself in their shoes. Yes. And there are days you don't know what is going to hit you when you go to school. Children confide in you. Some um, of them are coming to school hungry. Whatever, and that, to that part food of it. For them. Yes, and you have to be that rock sometimes for them. Mm. That's going on. You, you have to see what they're going through. Empathy. Sometimes you have to visit their parents. Mm -hmm. Try so to all sort that, a part out. of the, mm -hmm. they see you as being human. That's the element of the That's a huge responsibility teacher. because some persons, when they are selected as teachers, they are of the view that my responsibility lie within the classroom where I teach you from my knowledge. Anything else, the guidance counselor or psychologist or whatever the case well, that, well, that is. Makes you, that makes you an instructor. Mm. That doesn't make you a teacher. There must be some element. Is that social element, that human element that mm -hmm. goes along with teaching that makes you, that Hearing. makes the difference between a good mm -hmm. teacher and a great teacher mm -hmm. or excellent teacher. And so it, it, we make sacrifices that mm -hmm. we don't even know what we're making. It's the nature of teaching. Yeah. And no matter how we try to run away from it, we understand. Mm -hmm. So I used to be in the field of labor relations in teaching mm -hmm. to calculate salaries and so on. And we complain about certain things. And we end up going back to the same places <laughs> because it's just the nature of yes. what the profession is, you that you you're do. bowling, mm -hmm. that element is still important. Mm -hmm. So all the great math teachers, all the great English teachers, there is some personal thing about your teacher mm -hmm. that makes that, that I your favorite one. I want to ask one. you what, that makes who, it stand out. who was one of your memorable teachers? Oh, I've had a, a, I know you've had a lot. A lot of good teachers. For instance, mm -hmm. uh, at secondary school, mm -hmm. um, I, I remembered in particular my English teacher, especially in the upper levels, a woman from Parham. Uh, her name was Veronica Gordon. Mm. And her, she wasn't, she wasn't, extroverted and flamboyant like as people as the kind of person but she was just good at what she did mm -hmm. and we were so impressed we were so we were so in awe of mm. the fact that she knew english like nobody else knew <laughs> it wasn't going to be we, we wouldn't disrespect her mm -hmm. and anybody who would disrespect her would be in trouble mm -hmm. so she stood out in, you in guys terms protected of her i don't even know she knew that we did we, we respected her uh -huh. we respected that body of knowledge mm -hmm. that she had Failure wasn't an option for us. We knew we would never fail, mm -hmm. in a sense. And she seemed to be so well organized, so she kind of stood out mm -hmm. in, that, in that sense when school there. For me as well, I got up in my history teacher was also good. Um, my woman, lady by the name of Myra Hart, who taught me history and taught me a little bit more. You didn't more. have male teachers? Yeah, I had good male teachers, just hold on. And so, <laughs> Um, <laughs> it, it was fascinating because um, mm -hmm. I remember she used to tell me uh, um, the premise of arguments, right? It's a premise leading to a conclusion mm -hmm. that you're making a point, so it must have certain basic premises. Yes. And this, uh, this whole idea to be able to explain yourself, yeah, I became good to be a critical thinker, that term yeah. that people are using now. Yes. Right? Because I learned that yes. in a sense. So from that, those elements, stuck with me from the upper secondary school level. Mm -hmm. In fact, my, one of my favorite um, male teachers was in primary school. Mm. It was a gentleman by the name of um, Kurt Lee Lake. Okay. Yeah, he, he taught me in what was then junior four. But Yet he did nearly yeah. the exam class. Yeah, but I don't, even, I don't know if I remember the content that he taught. What Wait. I do remember that he, he played the guitar. Uh -huh. And on a Friday afternoon, when we were finished all the spelling and the maths and the whatever. You'd we, entertain. Oh, nah, we'd entertain. we sing together, man. <laughs> the whole class singing, but he would play the guitar and the kids would, would sing and that was whatever fun. it was. And that, that creative thing. Yeah, and I remember way back there, we'd sing a song, Everywhere I go, and the guitar would be strumming, People want to know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Why I, I love mango so I like that road song. Come I know from. That but song. this the whole yeah. notion of. I can still remember songs that we sang that then school became enjoyable. I used to like the West Indian reader. <laughs> that red book, that it, it was just content mm. about the West Indies and Anansi stories. And I liked brighter grammar, brighter grammar. I like that as well. Uh, but the strangest thing is at the Pilgrim Holiness School, there was a teacher called Miss Jeremiah. And she had a belt and she spanked us. But somehow, she was firm, 
but you wanted to learn because again the knowledge and she was so precise and then I went to the Antigua Girls High School Uslin Lewis stands out we the Hodge and male teachers maybe Mr. Saunders with Spanish I wish I had paid more, more attention. attention to Spanish because look at this 25% of our population is Spanish but at that time Oh, you just feel so Antiguan and so English. You never imagined that the Spanish value of would it then. become valuable. Yeah. And they were, for me, in secondary mm. school, the male teachers challenged me. Mm. So I said, so for instance, I, I mm -hmm. always taught people like Dr. Austin Josiah, mm -hmm. who taught me Spanish in first form. Well, we, <laughs> we were supposed to be doing Spanish. That's what I think. <laughs> But I don't know if anybody remembered the doing Spanish. We just waited for the Friday afternoon class <laughs> in life lessons, uh -huh. and we'd be able to put a question in the box yes. on a Monday, and he'd <laughs> answer it on a Friday. It has nothing to do with Spanish, <laughs> but I work there. Uh, people like Howard Warner yeah. taught me. But Howard right. Warner. Mr. Warner speaks Spanish fluently yeah, now. He teaches all the time. That's what he yes. was. He's a Spanish yes. teacher. That's no. And he's, he's always meeting me and trying to, uh, you know. Nobody with him. He taught Max too. <laughs> but um, he. He challenged me in school. Yes. And I, I think people like him saw the leadership, and, but he said I was using the leadership for the wrong things. But, <laughs> but, but um, I don't know what was the wrong things. So I would rise to the occasion. <laughs> I won 98% of the battles. He won one. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him a 2%. Listen. And remember, these people became my colleagues and in yeah. many ways my friend. Yes. Uh, along the way so that was a challenge but so in those days people used to be very respectful not just of the principal you know we revered we, our oh, teachers okay. we revered well, our lovely. teachers our teachers could do no wrong yeah we still yes, argue they spank us, mm -hmm. but somehow and, but in we the line knew that they cared and in the line of principalship yes they, we, i've had some good principals in my life mm -hmm. my primary school was a lady named miss smith she's shorter than mrs green shorter mm -hmm. and she wear these pump seals they call them Mm -hmm. And that woman was a regular lovable criminal. You know you had, <laughs> <laughs> you know you had to learn inside there. We never thought she was human until we found some eggshell, eggshells in the bin at afternoon. We, we snuck into the school. And, um, and we were wondering where these eggshells came from. Because mm -hmm. in those days, we never imagined that the teacher actually eat food. I never saw her eat. <laughs> They were so primitive. You see a walk from the bottom of the hill in those <laughs> pumps up to the middle of Wilkie's to the school. So she she ate was solid. Eggs. Yeah. And then when we got to Pierce Secondary, they had Cardinal King, the shadow, because mm -hmm. he moved in a way that you, you, you never heard him coming. <laughs> and so up to today, <laughs> I, tell my, I told my, stu tell my students, I wear shoes that are principal shoes, comfortable but quiet <laughs> and yet fashionable. <laughs> yeah. So I wear a set of clocks. Do you realize what's yes. happening here? What you have become mm -hmm. is a, it's a mixture of everybody. It's a combination of everybody. Of the experiences you mm -hmm. had with your teachers, Church, my principals. The principals, your parents, yeah, and I didn't, the even, I didn't and even mention the great Ruth Limerick, the Iron Lady. <laughs> <laughs> is Margaret Thatcher? Yeah. And these are people. So even now today, I hear people saying, "Oh, the school needs a male principal." No, the school just need a principal. <laughs> <laughs> they need no male principal. One little shout to my girl in a whole school, I breathe fire and fear. I used, to tell, I used to tell my children, we used to sing on the choir. You get mm -hmm. selected, you know. Uh -huh. And that woman could hear when somebody was singing off key. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a tune in and, ah. and if you, are, you sing off key, you'd be dealt with. Yes. Yes. The school was doing a choral speaking, a poem. You understood that happened at that, Antigua that, Girls High School. That with diligence, Miss Europe as well. diligence was yeah. was important. Excellent. Yes. yes. So I have had good Caribbean teachers in a good Caribbean structure, and I'm a, at the vanguard of safeguarding those traditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think they, they they all held on to, and even for today's new principles, mm -hmm. I think someone or to incorporate that in our training modules of the skill sets of the, the great ones. who is going to build the cat? Well, people like me, if I get an mm -hmm. opportunity to do the training. But I don't know the system, trust but me. But you'd have to be the Minister of Education Not there. necessarily. The Minister of Education just needs to be sensible and know to whoever they are to use the resources Delegate, that, yes. use the resources. Because we find success using um, models mm -hmm. from different people who worked along with us. Because I mm -hmm. saw... I worked with Austin Josiah also as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And he was like this big disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, at least that's what he presented. <laughs> but I also learned that you couldn't be a successful disciplinarian without being compassionate, yes. without seeing that 
what the children were going through, and he was exceptionally good at that. He knew how to take a bunch of kids with him and teach them something. We used to have a system where every time he would take them out, take a whole class out, we'd go to a restaurant. Oh, yeah, nice. And he'd pay, the, well, he'd get the money from, but he used to put the bill, <laughs> and they had to learn. Uh, yeah. I remember one time, they, they come and go to see, and the waitress asked the child, what do you like to eat? And she said, fowl. <laughs> 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 but there was she some meant chicken. Yeah, so a lot of we know what yeah. she meant. A yeah. lot of the things that people are telling me now as the modern movements of child friendly school and so on, and that you reward them. And I said, what are these people talking about? Because every time there was gonna be a field trip, we're gonna go on a picnic, we're going yes. bird island on a boat trip. Is it the teachers that were gonna cook up the food? The children mm -hmm. look forward to that. So it was as like a, a community event. Well, thank you very much. But if you uh -huh. did some foolishness, mm -hmm. you're gonna be dealt with and I came to play. understand that children I always appreciate you in that way. Mr. Green, let's go right into after school, beneath the canopy. A student told you, you're the whole pie. Oh. I suddenly recognized that she was, she was paying me a compliment. Because <laughs> what she was saying, um, there were so many... The wholesome. Yes to the character and to the role. The most pleasurable moments are the, uh, uh, come mm -hmm. after one, meaning mm -hmm. after formal school has closed. Because yes. that's the time mm -hmm. when as a principal, you, all work is, um, is high stress sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's the time you get to enjoy students. And that's why schools, In an informal need, need, setting. schools need to have activities. Yes. So I would go across, spend some time at the mm -hmm. panel, the music room where the band mm -hmm. is practicing, where the steel band is practicing. Mm -hmm. And the director have them under control and I listen to them play a song. If the song is rhythmic and I want to dance, I may do a little dance, oh nice. <laughs> yeah, they're playing a zook song, oh. <laughs> and that's But me. I heard something about that. Yes, I would that talk to you them. You entered a space and the student creatively switched from one genre of music to another genre. Well, these are the selectors. These are the music engineers. These are the upcoming DJ. Uh -huh. They know they play the kind of music for an uh, old man principal. <laughs> and the songs that would fit a particular situation yeah. uh -huh. which is what they have to learn in their music so if they're going uh -huh. to play at your wedding uh -huh. they need to know what music to play if right. they're playing at a dinner party uh -huh. they need to know not only what music to play but the, the tone at which yes. to play it you can't be yeah. loud because people need to be talking yeah. and so so but those uh -huh. for me are the quiet elements and now covid has created a real problem for us because uh -huh. our school is a very social place and so mm -hmm. that is our greatest challenge. Physical distancing. Yeah, because you have to distance, and we are not a distance in school. Mm -hmm. I like conversations. Yeah. You go down to the football field, and there's a match being played. Can't uh, shout anymore? Well, there's no match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, football. we haven't played it's in true. over here. So it, yeah. it takes a toll on you. I yeah. like that. And I'd go and tell them if you miss, if you miss a goal, every one of you will be suspended. Oh. And they say, oh, my sir. <laughs> so they scored. They scored, but they know they're not going to be suspended. It's a part of the Jaguar. Do you uh, have a feeding program and a clothing program we, for those We have had the, the guidance counseling department from time to time have had feeding mm -hmm. programs. Mm -hmm. There are different types of feeding programs. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are feeding programs for people who are less fortunate, who yes. might be having a difficulty. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things are concerned as custodial care, generally handled by the, the, the guidance counseling people. Yes. And there might be support program for kids who are involved in sports and so on. Mm -hmm. So that if you live somewhere, you gotta make sure you eat, because if you're going to the yes, go to run or whatever. Yes. Yeah, we have those kinds of support areas. And there's a caring committee that's managed by a subcommittee. But this sounds like a, a whole community, yeah. a yeah, village. Well, uh, but, it also, but the, the caring is not just for students, though. No. The caring is also for the teachers, because yes. there, are, there are times when we need one another. Mm -hmm. So that the caring committee looks at things like that. So if, some, if somebody is sick. I've never heard about a caring community. Mm -hmm. There's a committee caring committee. In a school? Mm -hmm. and if that a sounds more if like a, a church. If a teacher is sick, we had a, the principal might be very busy. The mm -hmm. principal, the nature of work, and you may just forget that, listen, one of your teachers are sick and you need to take mm -hmm. um, maybe a bouquet Mm -hmm. a food basket to the mm -hmm. hospital. The caring committee was, is going to take care of that. Somebody has a debt in the family. Mm. The caring committee is going to remember that we need to go to the funeral, somebody to represent us. Yes. If there's going to, somebody going to do a, a tribute. All those kinds of elements. They, they, they might remind the principal that we, we need to have a social activity 
that brings the staff okay. together mm -hmm. as, as human because sometimes staff don't see you as human, you know, they too have their own trepidations <laughs> about principal <laughs> because you have to make them do their work. Mm -hmm. But they have to come back to a space. So yeah, you have those kinds of structures in school. So it's not just the principal. There are lots of people who make a great contribution to the development of our students. Keep the prin that wheel the principal the principal is the face of the school. Mm -hmm. But um the principal is not everything. You need sensible people around you making that contribution. So I like those things. So when we come together, we have a graduation ceremony. The, there's a graduation committee. But wait, I heard you say that every child's achievement should be celebrated mm -hmm. in grand style. In grand style. We don't I do anything I came to one of your grand style functions. And after four hours, we weren't near the end. Because it means then that we're being successful. It means Four that hours, the, Mr. Green, yeah, and we're still it, not at the end. But it means that there are lots of people to <laughs> celebrate. So if you had a prize giving ceremony, you finish in half an hour, that means nobody got an award. Okay, so As, how, how many award ceremonies do you have? In a one year? No, I'm just saying, give me a list of your awards. We ceremony. have um we have this in early October, we have the, the sports awards. Sports award. Mm -hmm. At the end of every term we have something called final assembly. Final that assembly. That is the, the, the mini the mini um, prize giving. Uh -huh. That's where we recognize Sports Award, Final, final assembly. assembly. And then we, we, we get to the, the biggie. The prize giving? Yeah. The, that, that's, you can't say, that's the one I attended. You, you attended one, at, I think, at Royal Antigua. Yes. Yes. That's the, that's the, that's the, the mother load. That is where we know all the accomplishments and we're going to declare who's going to be the student of the year yes. and so on. And but nobody was moving because they wanted to hear and you, deliber you deliberately kept that but information you, but, but what you also need you for also the end. See, what you also see, it is an opportunity for yes. performance for our top performers, our top musicians, yes. our top singers. They, they call it the big stage. <laughs> they get to the big stage. So you get, so when you come, the musicians are playing, the, the singers are singing. Oh, yes. my goodness. In between. It, it the, was beautiful. Yeah, and everybody, but yeah. boy, I said, I need food. So I want, well, we, after, we always have plenty food. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has been able to successfully sing. I don't sing think that I stayed until the well, end. Uh, there's so grand I, I lost cocktail all the food. and food always yeah. going on there. It's a party. And people have party to different things. Why can't we have big... I used to warn the parents, if you plan to come out of here in a hurry, mm -hmm. don't come mm -hmm. because we're going to spend time. If you come to my graduation in a hurry, don't, don't come. We don't need you because I am going to talk as long as I need to talk to tell you every good thing. Yes. I can t On those days, there are no bad children. Yes. I forget all your sins. <laughs> we are all wonderful. <laughs> Whoever goes to a graduation and say bad things about their school. Just this like a is, funeral service, you don't oh, say bad no, things. But it's a funeral service. This is the greatest institution yes. of learning. Yes. And they know they must respond with rapturous applaud. It's and they did. All, all, all yes. night long. They're well, and when I'm going up as the principal, yes. I have to get the loudest applause. Yes, they know. And when they go up, I carry on just for them. I so know. A, so that's what it's supposed to be. It was Our children are supposed to feel, energy. feel good about mm -hmm. themselves. We are to make a conscious effort to try and let children succeed. And when they do, we celebrate are to celebrate them. them. We, mm -hmm. We're not going to win all. Mm -hmm. But those who we win, yes. oh, we make a big But deal. even we also have to have a culture of support. Mm -hmm. so, and so you can't, if you're not having a culture of support, then you're going to have a bad-minded culture. Mm -hmm. And some parents will say, oh, my child not getting awards, so I'm not sending them. You're mm -hmm. making a mistake. Because when they come and they see they influence, they influence. But next year, I am going to be there. I yes. am going to be a I'm nominee. I'm going to be on that oh, big stage. No, we run a prize giving like the Grammy Awards. <laughs> yeah, and the nominees. <laughs> and the nominees. Ah. I know. And your face goes up on the yeah, screen. Yeah, I know. And, and, the, uh, yes. and the profile and is yeah, pre-recorded. Yes. And oh my goodness. And we don't ever underestimate. Uh -huh. Because you see, we have to live in the moment. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. Who tells you that that child is going to have another prize given? Well, Who tells you true. they're going to have another graduation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we party on. You have to make We that have grown a in such a way. I remember then. back into that, we, we got to a point where our graduation became a hot item. Mm -hmm. We started charging money for people to come. <laughs> You make money from everything. You're no, a real entrepreneur. It has a value. 
and people started paying. <laughs> people were saying, oh, how are you going to do that? People aren't going to come. They're going to give trouble. Well, if you go have the money, keep out my thing. <laughs> the first day we released the tickets, we released sold 500 out. tickets. And in 15 minutes, 500 tickets sold out. Wow. Right? Because the graduation is not that you're going to walk up and say, shake your hand, well done. It's, it's, it's a culmination yes. of what the school is about. So they're going to I be I know, fan. and it's a dressed up affair. Fantastic performance. Fantastic performances, <laughs> dance and music. It's a it, concert. It was lovely, itself. but Lord, you have to... You have to trim it. You have to trim it. Uh, you, you have to trim your TV show. <laughs> I have <laughs> I have no limit on, on the success of what's going on. So, so there's, there's, because of the pandemic, there's one outstanding. Yes, and what we, we have to find now creative ways of doing yeah. it. And so um, it's, not it's not the same. It's not the same. We're platform. We're, and we're working yeah. on it. Last, week, last year, we didn't have our graduation. It wasn't on a digital platform, no. Mm -hmm. we had, I got a lot of licks for it. But it was exciting. I, who cares? <laughs> we had a drive-in oh, graduation. Yeah. So you came in your car uh -huh. and you sat in your car. Right. And we used um, Donut Splash the drive-in movie right. concept. Yes. So you got a, a FM frequency into your vehicle uh -huh. and you turned in. The sound comes to you. Uh -huh. The pictures are up on the big screen. Mm. Take that. And <laughs> when we were finished, we had fireworks. <laughs> Stay with us on the follow show. If I follow to Mr. Green and his storytelling, I won't ever move on to another segment. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. I've oftentimes heard that students who are not originally from Antigua have increasingly done better than our local students. Is that a myth or there is some truth in that? But I, I wouldn't say that it's a myth. Mm. It, it's, a, it's a generalization that oftentimes proves to be true, but no, it has nothing to do with nationality. No. It has more to do with the same construct that we have been speaking about, uh, who's, who and what is driving them. Okay. That's self-determination. So uh, then so, the, so peer, the Antiguan parents need to get a mirror. A different. They need to get a mirror and begin to start look at themselves. Wow. And where, where education is concerned, mm. it, well, I don't want to say be more competitive because com competition is not a desired quality in education because mm -hmm. everyone is going to accomplish according to their own abilities and their own aptitudes and their varying levels of success depending on what your goals are. Yeah. and aspirations were in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But what we can find among some of them are stories of diligence that should drive us to do better. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I know about two, three years ago, mm -hmm. we had a, a set of twins that came here from the Dominican Republic, couldn't speak a word of English, a mm -hmm. third form. Third had form. to transition into the education system. And you know there's no teaching English as a foreign language. <laughs> so teachers have to work it out as they go. <laughs> so they would use, and they have to they would use they another Spanish speaker to do the translating. Uh -huh. And they would use Google Translation. Wow. Do you know that these kids are in fifth form. And they speak and they fluent are English? Uh, fluent English. They're doing very, very well academically. Determined. And determined to do well and will do well. So that sense of determination is what yeah. is, is uh, has nothing to do with, and I know, has nothing to do with um, nationality. It has, has to do. Has nothing to do with competition com either. No, it has to be the, the, the drive. drive and you understand mm -hmm. that you're going to have to work a little harder to get that done or put in the effort. There's going to be effort. And I see that. But that's commendable, the language barrier. I yeah, heard and I form. see them beating the language barriers all the time wow. and doing well. Because you see, their parents oftentimes see that education as that escalator in the manner we yes, used to. Yes, yes. I see one parent yes. who'd come and so all the parents mm -hmm. who do what they're supposed to do as parents kind of generally would get well. well. And when we say do what they're supposed to do, because people need to identify when we talk about parental support, what we, what we really mean. Mm -hmm. Parental support don't necessarily mean that you are required to teach your child. No, you're required to collaborate, to collaborate with, the with the teachers and you're required to support diligence and discipline Peer in your own child. So you might meetings. not necessarily um, understand the content of the mm -hmm. subject, but you can create an atmosphere where you demonstrate a genuine interest, interest. 
in what mm -hmm. is done. The diligence of parents uh, is going to make a difference. That's what parental support means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're going to have to teach them. No, that's why government hire teachers or private school hire mm -hmm. teachers. The teachers must teach, but parents must support. And I tell teachers all the time, we have to teach children as if they have no parents. And that is from a content mm -hmm. point of view. So if they go home and they don't have that home environment that can support it, then the teacher should suffice in, in that learning experience. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important element. We need to teach that, that desire. So it that returns hunger. to the social skills and the other factors. Mm -hmm. And then we learn. That are in addition um, to it academics. Don't matter, it, don't, it don't matter where you come from, you know. Mm -hmm. It matters who you live with. Mm -hmm. Matters who's raising you. So here we talk people who whether the people come whether the people you. come from the ghetto or come from that don't matter. It matter who is in control of, of your, your space mind. and mm -hmm. understand what's working. So whether you come from town or you come from country, mm -hmm. it's the same sets of vices that are available in the world. Who is guiding you? And obviously we understand that you can take a horse to the to the trough, but you can't force it to drink. drink. But then you would have done your part. Your sports award, I noticed that some of your awardees are also national recipients. That's how we rock it. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Green, can you at least be modest? No, that's a PM thing. We want to produce What's good men and women. What, what sports are offered at? The at Princess, Princess Margaret, Margaret School. We, we offer football. has uh -huh. become very popular. Yes. Well, the, the number one, surprisingly, the number one sport at Princess Margaret School for years used to be track and field. Right. Yes, you that dominated. Was the, well, we dominated a lot of things, but the point <laughs> is that the, the public saw track and field. No, Mr. Green, I can't <laughs> so manage if you, you. No, if you won, if you, you, we'd win a cricket championship, but the public doesn't hear. Oh. We win a football champion, the public here. But when you win a track and field championship, we are known for that. But mm. no, we have been doing well. So we there's track golf? and field. Um, we offered yeah, hold on. We we offered golf at a limit, but it's not golf's not popular mm -hmm. as what it's supposed to be. Then there's yeah. volleyball. Mm -hmm. We are still the defending male and female champions really? back to back. Mm -hmm. And COVID saved some people. <laughs> <laughs> There, yeah, and mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, we have that. We this cricket oh. as a really good sport, and you know, um, we were one of the um, the founding schools that introduced fencing. Oh yes, fencing, and mm -hmm. you won a, a national award. One for of that. our fencers was uh -huh. a sportswoman of the year yeah. from fencing. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, we have had a f um, a sportswoman of the year in golf mm. when I was there in the early um, in the early er elements. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the traditional elements are they, they are there. And your students have been receiving uh, scholarships. Yeah, scholarships? Lots, lots of them are receiving scholarships. Mm -hmm. We have been very dominant. Uh, we have quite a bit of the female footballers as well mm -hmm. have gone off on these scholarships. I know some of our male footballers, but the school can't take all the credit for that. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's a partnership with the community, especially yes. with football, because we mm -hmm. have a lot of these football clubs. We have yes. these academies mm -hmm. that are doing some good work as mm -hmm. well. And there's a partnership between us and them. So the school has to share, um, share the rewards with that and, and, and the appreciation yeah. with those community groups that are also working with young people. But you told me as yeah. well, it's not just about a student approaching the platform and accepting an award, the so presentation skills, interview so skills, your, acceptance yes, your school, speeches. Your school has to prepare them to face, you're preparing them for greatness. Yes. And so they have to learn to speak. Mm -hmm. They have to learn how to, when to dress. And that's why we have the awards. Yeah. So you, you, you don't come to an award in it's the same. It's a Grammy yeah, award. You don't come in the come same on. shorts you were kicking football. No. But for them, they also get an opportunity to see their teachers in a different space. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you the, let's take for instance the PE teacher comes to work in probably in in the PE shirt, yes. in the shorts and the the the, the, and the polo the, shirt, the polo shirt yeah. and the track pants, which is their tool. But when you come to a uh, at uh, uh, the sports award and you yeah. say to present the awards for netball, please welcome. And Miss Tittle is coming from the back. Miss Tittle and Miss Tittle comes out in a finest dandan gown. You want to hear? <laughs> dandan. Yes. <It's> <laughs> I old remember world. that word, dandan. Dan. So you you understand? Yeah. They see it in a different space. I wouldn't. I go to a sports award. I try to 
I won't be wearing what I wore last year because I'm watching to see what the, the big man come in with. <laughs> so it's it's a different yes, feel. And exactly. you raise enough money that we have we have in cocktails after. Mm. So it's a feel that the school Finesse. Um, recognizes that mm -hmm. I've made a contribution. And we also have an award at the Our Sports Award we call the We Remember Award. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we recognize the, 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 the sports people who would have made a contribution and have moved on. Mm -hmm. And we want them to know, we, we remember, remember you mm -hmm. and the, the foundation that you mm -hmm. built. They don't necessarily have to be um, international athletes, professional, no. Mm -hmm. they just people What's who the impact, impact that and, at made. the school level. And that's mm -hmm. our responsibility. Somebody mm -hmm. has to take it on at the next level. Mm -hmm. And now we have in second generations, all built into that. We believe that all children can learn. And so the academics are still the fundamental parts of what we do because you can't gain a scholarship if you can yes. if you don't have good academic records. And That's kids true. understand that. I, I listen to our, our graduates who, who let's say those, because we talk about sports now, mm -hmm. who do an interview. And, and I listen to them and I hear the public say how, how eloquent they are and how they handle themselves mm -hmm. so beautifully. And it says to me, that You've it done is a good it job. we not not me we no when I say you faculty you mean the faculty yeah parents, the, the goal it, you love it when a plan comes mm -hmm. together you love it when a plan's good mm -hmm. and you look at them and you see how they dress they carry themselves at oh my goodness but that dressing too I remember when I managed CXC awards and presentation ceremony these students after studying for all these years would just show up in some jeans drop over plaid shirt for the boys and the girls just coming in some little I made a rule with mm. Clay Brown, the director of but, education. But you have to say the thing right, you know. <laughs> because we don't often say the things right. It's what? which students were coming looking like that. Okay. <laughs> you, you know it oh, was okay. not going to be the public school students. I'm just saying that some students so I decided this is not happening. I cannot be managing a program taking time out to come in my dandan mm. and you're just showing up like you know you're on the beach so i made a rule each year you are going to show up here in your finest mm -hmm. that's it and that is why and guess what mm, it has it been continues the tradition. up to today mm -hmm. where parents have to purchase a dress for the prom or a suit for the prom and they also have to purchase an outfit for, for CXC awards and presentation in some instances. And that's because I felt just like you that you need to represent greatness. And that is why schools have things like a dress uniform. So when you hear people <laughs> go out on the radio, oh, why they need a dress uniform? Why they need a, why you need, because you need to learn. Let's say for instance, your dress mm -hmm. uniform requires you to have a tie. Mm -hmm. You know how many kids come and say, sir, um, could you tie my tie for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to tie it for you once, so watch how I tie it. <laughs> yeah? Yes. So then when you go to get a job, yes. you, you, you would have learned tie. how to tie the tie. If yeah. it requires a tie, wear a bow tie if, if it doesn't require whatever, but you have to tie a bow tie <laughs> too. But what really? I thought you just clipped it on. No, that, that's the cheap one. But <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green! <laughs> but that's the point. There, there's a, the point we're saying here is that there is a time... Is, there, it's a biblical principle for yes. the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes. There's a time, a time for and a place for, for everything. everything. Under I the remember, sun. yeah, I'm walking in town in a pair of cargo pants and and, mm -hmm. um, and sandals, and some of my students see me. You don't want to see the expression on their faces, like, like <gasps> sir, sir in short pants. <laughs> <laughs> But if I'm walking it down on a Saturday, Paula, <laughs> you're going to see me in time. <laughs> so that don't make any sense. If you go, if you see me, it, it, it means see, that they think highly of you, yes. that you're and always it means also, dressed what it means, classy. What it means mm -hmm. also, that there are no boundaries yeah. to, the, to your responsibilities as a role yes. model. Yes. There is indeed greatness at your school, your alumni. Two prime ministers, one mm. current, one past. CJ Green, Olympian. Jamaica Kim Cade, writer, poet. And you're still adding to that? We hope so. You know, I know my boy Mackerel would have done very
very well. It, it's just something about Mackerel that I like very much. Uh, well, in a sense, he, he would have made this he, list. He's still, he's still doing well mm -hmm. in some areas. Basketball, as maybe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you look back, the silver medalist at the Carifta Games. Yes. So we, we have, we, we're not, it's difficult. So we should speak. add him, yes. When we talk about schools and alumni, mm -hmm. And I try not to go into the list because that's problematic. Extensive. <laughs> there's so many. Yes. There are so many mm -hmm. in my time, before my time, yes. of from that mm -hmm. alumni that has been doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's, I try not to go list because when you look around the amount of school have impacted so many people, it's difficult to, 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 do, to do a list mm -hmm. because you keep missing people. And so it can be offensive. Yeah, and so we, we call the names that we, for you, mm -hmm. you, you, you didn't mention some great ones. You, the first West Indian to play for the West Indies cricket team is a PMI, Andy Roberts. Oh, my friend Andy. Yes. So do you He's get been to the Paula show. You, you so look say. at this. If he hears this show, I'll be in trouble. He'll say, mm -hmm. Paula, you forgot me, man. So if you go to lo the legal mm -hmm. fraternity, you're going to find a lot of them, the medical fraternity. Okay, well, let's construction. stop there. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, you're going to find them all over. Does this factor resonate with your student, your current student? Oh, yes. And we try, um, mm -hmm. we try our best to tell mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, one of the things you, 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 you have to make children understand that they're coming from a place that has produced. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you have to, your job is to do that. So what we have engaged in, not only telling the story, for instance, we have gone into murals. Mm. to show the depict the pictures of people who have done well mm -hmm. so there's one for the sports people mm -hmm. and you'd find you did you'd find there the track the olympians the yes. cricketers with the one for the performers mm -hmm. on the, we're working on one for the performers the people like singing Talia, calypso mm -hmm. monarch mm -hmm. um eddie mello um oh, okay. la tumba all of them oh boy la tumba all, was all, so all long ago calypso yes. joe yes yeah at our, our um, the late Calypso Joe, he has been back there for the first. In fact, the, the last graduation we had, mm -hmm. we marched into one of his songs. Because, we, you know, the, the, a lot of schools go with the old traditional chariots of boom, boom, boom. No, yeah. no. Princess Make Margaret is also situated in the middle of the pan zone. Yes. So steel band music, the, mm -hmm. the, the serenaders that came is still there, must be a part of the the tradition of the school. Gemini still finds its home there. Yeah. So at our last college graduation, every graduation now, the children march into the sound of Pan. Mm. And this year, we marched into the music of Calypso Joe. I think I hear boom boom. Do you keep in touch with your past students? Yes, um, and yes, they, they, they are contributing. And then there is a, there is a alumni society. Mm. We were working, just working on the, the final part of the constitution, mm -hmm. um, Laurie, Freeland Roberts, oh, yes. the, the the registrar, <laughs> yeah, solid PMI. Modesty. No, there's no the solid PMI, and she she mm -hmm. has been she has been at the vanguard of that. I never yes. met a woman love school so. <laughs> <laughs> that the woman love school and Laurie yeah. and I went to A levels together, mm -hmm. right? But she has been doing a fantastic job Good there for her. with the getting the alumni, and I wish mm -hmm. them every success. Yeah. The last um, alumni... Um, you must include my husband, Charles Ward. I'll, I'll work on him. Yes. And I'm glad you tell me that. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people seem to think that I went to Princess Margaret School. No, I didn't. Piers. I am I'm a proud alumni of the Piers Secondary School. All right. Yeah, and I feel as passionately about Piers... As you as do PM? Well, really? PM is... PM, yeah, I've been at PM so long now that PM is a part of me, but mm -hmm. um, I've had the opportunity. I taught at Piers as a teacher. I had the opportunity to return there as the deputy principal. Never wanted to leave, mm -hmm. but that's just how the situation is. But I feel passionately about the education that I received in that institution. Mm -hmm. We're celebrating 50 years this year. Difficult time to be celebrating again yes. with this COVID situation. Mm -hmm. But I think every child, every individual, mm -hmm. must feel a sense of passion about the institution that they went to. There's nothing wrong with that. And each one of them must feel, if we give them that opportunity, mm -hmm. that it their school is the greatest school in the so universe. So given an opportunity to be a principal for another school. I have gone past that. Not I don't interested? see my, no, I don't see myself it will be difficult for me cheering against Princess Margaret <laughs> at this time. I've gone too far to turn back. When I leave Princess Margaret, it has That's to be it. retirement 
or out of education. It yeah. would be very, I, I, I don't control those factors. I could be sent to another school next week. Yeah. But it would be cruel and unusual punishment mm -hmm. for the Ministry of Education <laughs> to do that to me at this point in and my life. And on that note, Mr. Green, your closing comments to the people of Antigua and Barbuda and anyone else who's watching the Paula show tonight. Uh, just to say to them that our children are our greatest resource mm -hmm. and we have to, to find a way mm -hmm. to, to reach them. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. And also to say to them that we as Caribbean people, sons and daughters of the Caribbean civilization, have to appreciate that many of the things that our forerunners did mm -hmm. were good, and we have to embrace those treasures, mm -hmm. because the treasure lies in learning and to knowing who we are yeah. as Caribbean people and sons and daughters of that civilization. Mm -hmm. We are great people. We have developed good models. And first of all, we need to understand that we are not really better than anybody, mm -hmm. but nobody is better, better than, than us. I like that. And I'm going to leave you with this tonight. It has guided me through school and also through my adult life. The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. Students, while their companions slept, they were toiling upwards through the night. Determination, diligence, and discipline, you will get through life and you'll have good success. Thank you very much for staying with us on The Paula Show. We end part two of my conversation with Dr. Colin Green and have a good night. Goodbye.